From Blender, I rendered 12 different layers in five categories, background elements, foreground elements, fog, masks, and additional lighting. I wouldn't have rendered so many different layers, but I was working under a deadline, so my process changed a little, and I did some unconventional things. I have another video that explains the backstory and process behind creating this scene in Blender, and I encourage you to check out that video if you haven't seen it already. Here we are in After Effects CS6. Why CS6? Because, because it's, it's the, the latest version that doesn't, doesn't require a subscription fee and it still does everything I needed to do. First, I'm gonna import all of the rendered elements. To do this, I usually just double click the project window and navigate to the file location. Be sure to check the image sequence box and in the project window, make sure the frame rate is set correctly. If it isn't set correctly, right click on the clip, choose interpret footage, main, then set the frame rate. You can also set the default import frame rate in the preferences. It's a good idea to rename your image sequences as you go to make them much easier to find later. Now that all the layers are imported, I'm gonna create a new composition by dragging the background layer onto the new composition button. Now I'll just add the rest of the foreground layers on top. Some of these layers aren't as long because the elements aren't on screen for the whole animation. The ones that appear later will have to get moved back to align with the scene. Now it's time to add the fog pass. The fog pass gets placed on top of the foreground layers and set to the screen mode. Here I'm duplicating the fog a few times to make it appear more dense. I tried experimenting by adding a hue saturation effect to the fog layers to increase the saturation so the scene didn't seem so washed out. But I didn't do this in the original and I wind up reducing the saturation quite a bit later on. If your layers were rendered in 16-bit, make sure to change the bit depth of the project by clicking here and changing it to 16 bits per channel. After some additional adjustments on the saturation, I'm copying the effect to the other fog layers. Now I'm gonna make some adjustments to the overall image by adding an adjustment layer on top and giving it the curves effect. Adjusting the curve like this will give the image more contrast by brightening the highlights and darkening the shadows. Now it's time to make the character really pop out by adding the character edge light pass. It can simply be placed above the foreground elements and set to screen mode. If it's too intense, the opacity can be lowered, but if it's too subtle, it can be duplicated to increase the intensity. Here I'm duplicating it and giving it the Gaussian blur effect to simulate a little bloom from the highlights. It's a bit intense though, so by pressing T, I can quickly reveal the opacity control and turn it down. Now it's time to utilize the character mask to brighten up the entire character. Drag the mask layer above the layer that contains the character, then make another adjustment layer and place it below the mask layer. Naming your layers is a good idea. Apply the curves effect to the new adjustment layer and set the track mat mode to luma mat. Now when you adjust the curves, it only affects the character. Because I had already rendered my main scene and I didn't have time before the deadline to re-render it, I used the same technique to darken the feet. I did this mainly to avert attention away from the feet and their imperfect ground collision. Now I'm gonna select everything and go to Layer, Precompose. This gathers everything that I selected and puts it in a new composition. This allows you to do some things that you couldn't do with adjustment layers. Here I'm duplicating the precomp, boosting the saturation, blurring it, then setting it to the color transfer mode. Doing this softens the color and makes it look more painterly or more like an HDR photo. I'll talk more about that in a minute. Double clicking on the precomp will take you back into the original composition. Now I'm gonna add the sharpen effect to my adjustment layer. Renders straight out of Blender don't have any sharpening, so adding some can help the image look crisp, but it also makes it look more like it was shot on an actual camera, because most cameras, at least the consumer level anyway, add sharpening. Now I'm going to apply a glow or bloom effect by going back into the other composition that contains the duplicated precomps and making another duplicate. This time, I'm applying a curves effect, a fast blur effect, and setting it to the screen mode. 
The curves can be dialed in so only the brighter parts of the image are glowing. It's looking pretty good, but the background is too bright. I'm going to keep pushing the HDR look by darkening the background. If you're used to the term HDR10 as a display technology or HDRI environments from the world of 3D, you may not know what I'm talking about. HDR simply means high dynamic range, but in photography, it describes the technique of taking multiple exposures at a wide dynamic range and tone mapping the stacked images to produce more contrast throughout the image. This is more or less the look I'm going for. So to darken the background, I'm gonna bring in a mask of the background, then place another adjustment layer below it and set the track matte mode of the adjustment layer to alpha matte. Now the effects applied to the adjustment layer only affect the masked area. However, the hard edge of the mask ruins the look, but luckily we can apply effects to the mask too. So I'm gonna give the mask a fast blur, being sure to check the repeat edge pixels box. Much better. I have some smoke coming from the manhole in the street, but it didn't really show up very well in the main render, so I rendered it out by itself to add in later. I'm going to add it to the composition just below the fog layers and set it to the screen transfer mode. It's a little too bright as is, so by pressing T, you can easily bring up the opacity control to darken it down a little. It still looks a little weird, however, because the bottom edge is such a harsh line. So I'm gonna to switch to the Rectangle Mask tool and select the bottom part of it. By pressing F, you can bring up the Mask Feather adjustment. Also, change the Mask mode from Add to Subtract. If the mask needs to be adjusted, it can sometimes be easier to change the Mask Expansion instead of moving the mask itself. I noticed that my skyline was a bit empty looking, so I decided to add a skyscraper to the background. To do this, I used an image from textures.com. It can just be dropped into the comp, cropped if necessary, and scaled to match the scene. Make sure that it's placed below the fog layers and set to screen mode. Now it's time to really blend it into the scene. As you can see, the background of the image doesn't quite match the scene background. This can be easily fixed by adding a curves adjustment and darkening the blacks. Now it still doesn't match the scene, so I'm gonna add a fast blur to match the softness of the other background elements. The problem now is that it doesn't move along with the rest of the background. To fix this, add a null object. Depending on how much your scene moves, you may want to motion track it, but in this case, I'm just going to manually place it on another prominent background element and set a position keyframe by pressing P to bring up the position controls and clicking the stopwatch icon. Now I can move the playhead to the beginning of the animation and realign the null object with the background object. Unlike Blender, After Effects will automatically place a keyframe when you move the null object. Now all you have to do is click and drag the pick whip from the building layer to the null object to parent it to the track. The problem now is that the skyscraper is overlapping the foreground buildings. Luckily, I already have a mask that I can use to fix this. Place the mask layer above the building layer and set the building's track mat mode to alpha mat. I noticed a problematic glow around the character. This is being caused by the character brightness adjustment layer. So to fix it, I'm going to select the character mask, apply a blur to it, and then a curves adjustment to darken it down, choking in the mask a little. The most annoying problem I had to deal with in this scene, however, was when the character's feet didn't fully contact the ground. I fixed this by making a solid that matched the color of the shadow and then masking and keyframing it to follow the foot's motion. It took a lot of tweaking to make this look good. In hindsight, it probably would have been easier to make the sole of the foot thicker instead of trying to match the shadow, feather, and fall off, especially when the foot is lifting off the ground. That's it for this video. Though I've described how to do this in After Effects, Basically, everything I've shown here could also be done in the Blender Compositor. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing.